Today, we cover HIFIL STEM. HIFIL STEM is causative action. It takes what we know from the Cal STEM, which is our standard, and it adds this causation. So if I say he killed, that would be Cal. But in the HIFIL, it would be he caused to kill. See the difference? Now, sometimes in the HIFIL, it simply mirrors the cow. So there is no causative aspect. So sometimes it's just simply he killed, just like cow, using Katal as an example. Other times it's declarative. This is still causative in effect, but it's more of a declaration of outside party on another person. So maybe your verb is in the cal to be guilty, but in the hifil, it would be uh, de to declare to be guilty. So it's still somewhat causative, but it's this declarative aspect. There's the factative use as well. Again, still kind of having this causative action. But when it's factative, it's it's combining fact and either declaration or causative action together. And so if if the verb is to be great in Cal, hifil, factative use could mean make someone great. So that's what the hifil is in a nutshell causative action. Now the HIFIL is distinctly marked. It's unmistakable. There's two critical diagnostic marks in the perfect. First, you have the hey hiric prefix. Second, you have the hiric yod stem vowel. It's just as the name suggests. HIFIL, HIFIL, H-I, hey hiric. Plus towards the end, you have the I before the L. In Hebrew, that's the unchangeable long vowel, hiric yod, hifil. Now that's the perfect tense. Let's get through it. Here's the cal, katal, katla, katalta, katalt, katalti, katlu, kataltem, kataltem. Katalnu. Compare that with the hifil. Hiktil. Hiktila. Hiktalta. Hiktalt. Hiktalti. Hiktilu. Hiktaltem. Hiktalten. Hiktalnu. So again, hey, Herrick, Herrick Yod. Those are the critical diagnostic markers. Don't confuse the Herrick perfect, third masculine singular, with the Nifal infinitive construct or imperative. You'll notice Hifil does not have a dogesh, whereas the Nifal does because the noon assimilates. Furthermore, Hifil has the Hiric Yod. The Nifal does not. Now, what about the imperfect? Let's take a look. In the Cal, we have Yiktol, Tiktol, Tiktol, Tiktali, Ektol, Yiktolu, Tiktolna, Tiktolu, Tiktolna, Niktol. In the Hifil, we have yaktil, taktil, taktil, taktili, aktil, yaktilu, taktelna, taktilu, taktelna, naktil. So the critical imperfect hifil diagnostic markers is the pathac underneath our prefix 
consonant plus the hyric yod stem vowel. That hyric yod is almost entirely 100% there except for the third feminine plural, second feminine plural. But you should be able to tell, hey, we've got a pathak underneath our prefix, something's different. This is hifil. PL and puau use shava under the prefix. Nifal uses hyric under the prefix. And cal uses hyric under the prefix. The only one that uses pathak is hifil. Now let's look at the imperative in the hifil stem. Let's compare it to cal, but let's also compare it to nifal. I want you to see both. First, we'll start with cal. We have katol, kitli, kitlu, katolna. The hifil is hocktail, hocktili, hocktilu, hocktelna. Okay, compare that with the nifal. Hikatail, hikatli, hikatlu, hikatalna. So you'll notice a few things. First and foremost, the hey does not have a hyric, it has a pathak. And second, if the hyric yod stem vowel is not present, it's a tsere. And that's how we can tell the difference. Plus, there's no dagesh. Now, the infinitive construct for the hifil is very similar to the imperative, except that it does have hyric yod, haktil. The infinitive absolute looks just like the imperative, second masculine singular, haktail. No surprises there. The hithil participle has our main prefix plus a pathak. And then we have our stem vowel, hyric yod. So in Cal, we have kotel, koteleth, kotlim, kotloth. In the hithil, we have maktil, maktaleth, maktilim. Maktiloth. The PL and the Puau use Shava underneath the Mem. When it comes to weak verbs, we see largely the same diagnostic markers. Not a lot changes. But some caveats. In the first guttural, instead of Hey Hyric, you may see Hey Segel. But there's no changes there. We've seen similar behavior elsewhere with compensatory lengthening. In large part, the perfect will still include the hyric yod stem vowel. If it's not a hyric yod, it's going to be a pathak instead of a tsere. Again, this is in first gutturals. In the imperfect, we're still going to see a pathak underneath our prefix plus a hyric yod. The imperative, we're going to see hey pathak and either a tsere or hyric yod for the stem vowel. No surprises with the infinitive construct, infinitive absolute. It's the same as what we saw in our strong verb. No surprises with the participle. It's the same as with the strong verb. The same is true with third chet or third ayin weak verbs. Perfect is still gonna use here, uh, hey, Hyric plus a Hyric Yod or Hey, Hyric plus a Pathak in the stem vowel. Imperfect is still going to use Pathak in the prefix plus a Hyric Yod stem vowel. Imperative is going to be the same uh, with a Hey, Pathak prefix and either a Pathak or Hyric Yod in the stem vowel. Infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, and participle all follow suit with the strong verb. Third aleph follows the same strong verb features that we've already seen. No changes there. Hey, hyric in the prefix for the perfect plus a hyric yod stem vowel, or if it's not a hyric yod, it's a tsere. The imperfect follows the pathak prefix vowel plus a hyric yod stem vowel. The imperative follows hey pathak 
plus either Sere or Hirik Yod in the stem vowel. Infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, and participle all follow suit with strong verbs. Third hey, weak verbs, follow suit. Uh, as far as the perfect is concerned, there will either be no stem vowel or the stem vowel will be Hirik Yod, but you will have hey Hirik prefix. The imperfect won't have a stem vowel, but you will have the pathak underneath the prefix. The imperative won't have a stem vowel, but it will have the hey pathak prefix. Infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, and the participle, none of them have a stem vowel but they all follow suit. So infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, follow the imperative with the hey pathak, and the participle as the mem pathak, prefix. With first noon weak verbs, there will be noon assimilation. Do not confuse these with nifil. And the key difference will be pathak under the prefix, when so present, right? For the imperfect, imperative, infinitives, and participles, but not the perfect. And the stem vowel will be hiric yod, which is unchangeable long. It's unmistakable. So look at the perfect. You have hey hiric prefix plus the stem vowel hiric yod. Or you have hey hiric plus stem vowel pathak. Now this can't be confused for the nifal perfect because we don't see a noon up front, right? In the imperfect, we see the pathak under the prefix plus our hiric yod. That's very easy to tell. Now the imperative, we have the hey pathak. If it were nifal, we would have a comets as our stem vowel. But in the imperative, we either have a tsere or a hiric yod. So the vowels are different. The infinitive construct has the hey pathak plus a hiric yod. Infinitive absolute, hey pathak plus tsere. No surprises there. Participle has mem pathak plus hiric yod. No surprises there. First yod is different. And if you recall from earlier lessons, First Yod was originally First Vav and later became First Yod. Well, that's important because the Vav returns in the conjugation. So Yashav in the Hifil becomes Hoshiv. The Yod becomes a Vav, but we still prefix the He. But because we've got the Vav, which is actually a holum vav. We already have a vowel, so there's no need to add hiric to the beginning. However, we still get our stem vowel, hiric yod, and if it's not a hiric yod, it's going to be a pathak. In the imperfect, we will get our prefix, but instead of a pathak, we get our holum vav, which takes the original yod and lengthens it to vav, with a holum. And then we get our hiric yod stem vowel. If it's not hiric yod, then we get tsere. No surprises there. In the imperative, same thing. We get our hey, but instead of a yod following, we lengthen it to vav, add the holum. There's no need to have a hiric then. And we'll either have a tsere stem vowel or hiric yod stem vowel. In the infinitive construct, same thing. Hey, holum vav. Stem vowel, hiric yod. Infinitive absolute, same thing. Hey, holum vav. With a tsere. With the participle, mem, holum vav. Plus stem vowel, hiric yod. No surprises there. With biconsonantals, comb, seam, bow, 
the Hirik under the hay will become either Tsere or Hatef Pathak in the perfect, but we will still have our stem vowel Hirik Yod. In the imperfect, our Pathak will lengthen to a comets underneath the imperfect prefix, but we will still have Hirik Yod stem vowel. In the imperative, we will retain that lengthened comets under the he prefix, and we'll either have a tsere or hiric yod in the stem vowel. No surprises, we see the same behavior in the infinitive construct, and infinitive absolute, and participle. The exception to the participle is it's either a tsere or it's a shava underneath the mem. However, the Hiric Yod stem vowel is consistent. It will always be there for the participle. So you should have no difficulty being able to determine is this Hifil. Well, that's it for the Hifil today. Join us next week. We will cover Hofal. See you then.